Aren't you two going to play? Good morning guys. As you can see, I've got two co-stars with me instead of the usual one. I've been dog sitting this little guy. This is Boo, Boo Radley, the past several days. And I think I've mentioned before that I did want to get a little pal for Ray Ray at some point. You know, whenever I leave home, I imagine she gets extremely lonely because she's just a very affectionate type of dog. I feel like it would be good for her to have some company when I'm not here. So this has been a nice little test run. Obviously, I haven't really been able to leave these guys here alone too much, never more than half an hour to an hour so I could go to the grocery store, basically, because I don't know what Boo's going to do when I'm not here. It's one thing to leave Ray Ray, but Boo's not my dog, so I don't know what he's going to do. I was just praying for my shoes every time I left the house. But so far, so good. As far as whether I am going to go ahead and get two dogs, this has been illuminating. It is a lot to deal with to have two. Everyone with two dogs was like, two is easier than one. And I always thought, that sounds like bullshit. It is nice for Ray Ray to have a playmate pretty much at all times. In fact, they're playing right now. You might hear little nails on the floor. And they already had a little play session just now before our walk. The clip you guys saw them playing was before we left and then it is too much to walk two dogs and have a camera. But anyway, this goes on and I love that because I like Ray Ray having someone to play with and having entertainment. In fact, this is great entertainment for me. Shall we just watch a while? You get the idea. So it's been a lot of that the past few days, but also I think Ray Ray has been a little bit insecure, I think. She looks to me for reassurance a lot. Anytime Boo climbs in my lap, you know, he's he ate half of her food one day, which by the way was while his own food was down for him and he was eating it and I was washing a dish or something and I look over and he had eaten half of her food. So it's just a lot of territorial infringement. I know a lot of that would we would adjust if we got another dog here for real, for real, right? Please stop licking me. Stop licking me. Not to mention training the new dog the way I would need it to be trained because I feel like I'm definitely a lot more of a strict dog owner compared to Boo's owners just based on his behavior. I've had to tell him things 10, 11, 12 times not to do it and that doesn't happen with me typically with Ray Ray. Like Ray Ray understands like if I tell you twice, that's the last one I'm gonna tell you. I think he's used to getting away with a lot more than he's gotten away with with me, but I don't know, it's been a fun weekend nonetheless. I think they've had fun together. They're both clingy as fuck. They've been up my ass the entire time. I can't even walk from room to room without hearing two sets of nails on the floor behind me. So that's the thing with little dogs. The littles, the littles are very clingy. Hopefully Ray Ray will at least be very exhausted from how much playtime she's had this weekend. Typically she only gets, you know, half an hour or so when we go to the park every day. But this has been play sessions pretty much on demand, which has been good.
I've got kind of an action-packed day. I got to surrender boo, and then I've got to get myself ready because I'm going to this day party called Everyday People. My friend DJ Shirak, who I've mentioned before, is spinning there. This is the last one of 2018. It's an outdoor party, so they can only do it, you know, up to a certain point. It's October now, so it's gonna start getting a little bit brick outside. You know, brick for LA. But I went to the last one, and it was fucking fun. I can't wait. I'm not even drinking because I'm still whole 30 -ing. I'm 14 days in. Feeling pretty good, but not really feeling any better in my injuries, which is disappointing. But I'm gonna keep on going. So once I drop Boo off, I've got to uh, put on a little bit of makeup and figure out what I'm gonna wear, girl. It's always the most stressful thing. Quite frankly, the only reason I leave my house these days is so that I can put together a new outfit. I'm thinking I'm gonna do another lookbook soon, just like a, a transitional, or maybe even just, it is actually fall now, type of lookbook. No one watches my lookbooks. They get very low views, but I like doing them, even though they're very labor intensive. So I think I'm gonna do one anyway. I've got a couple bits and bobs that I wanna style, old and new, some things that I've sort of rediscovered in my closet clear out and some things that I picked up. So I think I will do another lookbook soon. And uh, yeah, I'm just, cruising along on my whole 30. It has not been really challenging for me at all in terms of sticking to it. It's just, um, it's been interesting to see the improvements I've experienced and the ones that I have not. But I will talk about that more in an upcoming video. It's going to be the next She Tried It, which I think I told you guys in my last not vlog. So I'll have a more in-depth summary of my thoughts on the whole 30. In the meantime, I need to do my oil pulling and I need to call my mom for her birthday. So I'm going to go do that. Ray Ray and I are just getting back from dropping off Mr. Boo. <sighs> so it's back down to just us two bitches, right Ray? It was a fun five days or so, but it's definitely given me a lot of food for thought on the whole second dog notion because it's given me a new appreciation for my little family of just Ray and I. You know, I like our little family. From the jump, it was always going to be if I get a second dog, it's for her because Ray Ray is more than enough for me. But I do like the idea of her having company to play with whether I'm here or whether I'm not here. But seeing how she responded, at least initially, to having another dog in her territory made me maybe wonder if she's also good with it being just us and as long as we get to go to the park often and she gets to play with her friends there, maybe she'll be good with that. So I don't know, we'll have to see. I think for the foreseeable future, it probably is gonna be just us two because I don't know, I like, I like our dynamic where it's just Ray and I, but I think it will be fun to dog sit again in the future next time they need or some other friend of mine needs because it is nice to do it for a few days, but I just don't know if it is the right move for us full time, especially since it's hard enough like when I go out of town to find someone to look after her. So I can imagine it would be even harder to find someone to watch two dogs for me. Anyway, it was a fun five days, but man, I cannot wait to get some proper sleep tonight. To help me get amped for this party, I did stop and get a coffee. At this point in my intermittent fasting, you know, transition, I guess, I'm about three months in, and I would say I'm pretty well fat adapted at this point, where I wake up in the morning and my energy is good. I don't feel like it's that, that hard for me to get to 4 p.m. when my eating window typically opens any longer. At this point, it's very doable for me. Some days I do feel a bit more hungry, but for the most part, I'm all right. So that habitual hunger that would arise uh, just from my body being conditioned to eat earlier than that has more or less subsided and I am pretty well adapted to my routine at this point. However, this event I'm going to start at three, so that will be a, a little bit before my eating window and I don't want to move my window up several hours just to eat before I go. And I've also been researching how fully fasting, where you fast for a full day or two days during the week can actually be really good for you in terms of helping your fat burn and yada yada yada. I've been thinking about incorporating that maybe twice a month. So I may 
do that today. And since I'll be at this party from 3 p.m. when it begins, because that's when Essence goes up till the wheels fall off, I'm sure I'll be there until it's over because it's just so fun. I'm not really gonna have an opportunity to eat. I'm just gonna be drinking, you know, Pellegrino or sparkling water, whatever, the whole day and dancing my ass off. So that's where the coffee comes in because I feel like I might need a little bit of help energy-wise for that, although being social and just having fun, that really does get my energy levels up naturally. Nonetheless, I don't think I'm going to want to come home and then eat at 10.30 p.m., 11 p.m. So this is gonna be a bit of an experiment. I'm going to be fasting pretty much until tomorrow. We're gonna try it and see how it goes. Hopefully I won't be too hungry or tired or get a headache or anything like that, but I think I will be all right. I think this will be a good test to see just how well my fat adaptation has come along because like I said, my energy levels seem to be a lot more steady now, now that I've been doing this a few months. But in the meantime, I'm just gonna do a couple things around the house, maybe relax a little bit, but just a little bit of admin stuff on the computer. And then I have to shower because I smell horrible. Get myself ready for everyday people, LA. By the way, this is a party that goes on in different cities. It's even international. They just did one in Cape Town. So if you're curious about it, I will link their Instagram in the description box. It's just a really awesome, dope black people party that they throw, you know, in various locations with killer DJs and great vibes. Not to say that other races aren't welcome. I mean, some of my friends coming with me are not black people, but it's mostly black people there, just, just saying. But that's pretty much it for now. So I will check in with you guys when I'm doing my makeup, I think, for this party, which just a heads up, I've been getting super experimental, I guess would be the word with my makeup lately. Cause if you watch these not vlogs, you know, I don't even wear makeup <laughs> nine out of nine days. But <laughs> when I do do my makeup, it's typically because I'm gonna be recording some videos or whatever. But when I have put on makeup just for life occasions lately i've been really just having fun with it and it's been really good because it's reignited my interest in makeup you know and in exploring my own makeup collection which is vast so fair warning i might be putting weird colors on my face in weird places and i think ray ray is officially in recovery mode she needs to recharge after having a weekend of much playing so <laughs> His eyelids are getting heavy.
the look. I don't know. I don't know how to explain the white eyeliner brows thing. It just, it just felt like something I wanted to try out and we'll see if I regret it, but I'm kind of liking it. It's just about time for me to go, so I'll, I will show you guys my outfit and then I have to give Ray a quick pee break and then I will be on my merry way. I've got these jeans on, which were originally from Zara. They are basically gold jeans. My Doc Martens, can't take those off. And this sweater, which is more or less completely see-through, but it's a party, y'all. I do not remember what brand this is from, but it's probably as old or older than these jeans. And these jeans are a good five years old. So that's the way that is. And then the earrings are by Melody Asani, which is typically the case with my jewelry. So this is the look. Comfy enough shoes so I can dance. And the last time I tried to wear these jeans, they were fitting a bit snug and they're feeling perfect today, which is great news. So I guess Whole30 is treating me right. Even though my goal with Whole30 is not necessarily weight loss, I will always take some weight loss. Thank you. Oh, and my camera card was full, but uh, after I took a look at my makeup in another mirror in my bathroom, I felt like my face needed a little bit more color, so I did add some blush. I used the Hourglass Diffused Heat, but all of the makeup I use will be in the description box because I know, you know, I was just kind of showing things and then moving on. So everything will be listed there. And it's time for me to go. Good morning, guys. It's the next day. It's Monday. And uh, I had a lot of fun at Everyday People. I stayed a really long time, but I didn't even stay until the end because I was getting worried about this one needing a bathroom break. I had Walter before I left, of course, but I was there for like seven hours. I don't need alcohol to have a good time, guys, but it helps. In any event, um, I was definitely spamming all my IG fam on my stories. If you guys saw, you saw that that party was lit as fuck. So I'm a little tired today, mainly because I did wind up fasting, as I was saying yesterday. As I was actually going to wrap up the vlog yesterday, but I felt like I wanted to kind of update you guys on how it was going with this more long fast that I'm doing, where today I will resume my normal intermittent fasting schedule at about four, maybe three o'clock. But I feel fine. I did have a cup of coffee yesterday, and I think that made me jittery. I feel like it probably wasn't even necessary. And I danced pretty much the entire time I was there. I mean, I wasn't like fucking it up the whole time, but I was definitely like dancing pretty much the whole time I was there and just drinking club soda with lemon, which probably technically broke my fast because I think even that little squirt of lemon juice in your club soda will produce an insulin response. And I didn't think of that until later, but oh well. But I was missing my Ray Ray, so I came home around 10. <laughs> and then just uh, took her for a W-A-L-K and we went to bed. Ray and I already went for a nice W-A-L-K this morning and I met some of my friends from the dog park while we were out and a new lady who's got a Rottweiler puppy. He's 20 months and he's named Ziggy. And we were just having such a nice conversation and talking about our dogs, you know, like our dogs who had passed away and things like that. And it just really put me in a good mood. It, I mean, I was like emotional after because I was remember, remembering my last dog, Onyx. And when you lose someone or a pet, family member, whatever you love, you miss them forever. The grieving process, the idea that grief ends is a myth. But we were just talking about how our current dogs, we feel like there's some piece of our last dogs in them somehow. Like there's certain things that Ray Ray does that are so weird that I had never seen another dog do except for Onyx. So it just, it was like happy kind of like misty eyeness walking home and it just put me in a really good mood for today. I just finished my oil pulling and I'm sitting here with my dog and watching Adrian Expression. There he goes. He's talking about Ariana Grande and Pete Davidson splitting up, which came as a surprise to no one. The moment I heard that he had gotten like tattoos of her within their first month of being together and that they were engaged in under a month, I was just like, y'all are gonna look real stupid in the next six months. I think they've lasted slightly longer than my prediction, but if the over under was like one year by Price is Right rules, I fucking won. I, I really don't want to delight in their, you know, suffering or whatever, you know, this is not schadenfreude, but it's definitely like, duh. 
no shit, it didn't work out, you fucking idiots. Anyway, I'm going to head out to, I don't know if I told you guys already or not, but I did wind up getting the MRI on my knee, and I did ask them if I could get a copy of it myself because A, I fucking paid for it, and B, I want to be able to have the images in case I switch chiropractors or need to show it to an actual, like a regular like orthopedist or something or whatever at some point, I just wanted to have them, and they can only give them to you on a CD, so I literally can't even look at them because I don't have a computer that has a CD drive, I have a Mac, and they stopped making them with CD drives years ago, but I'm still gonna run up there to the facility and grab that today since they said it is ready for me. And that is it for now. So I'm going to finish watching my Adrian expression and just kind of getting myself ready for the day. I've already been going through emails and things like that. But um, yeah, that is my day thus far. I am back from the valley and picking up my CD with my MRI image or images. And since the MRI facility is a stone's throw from a Costco, I decided to do a Costco run while I was up there. And I thought I might show you guys a few of the things I picked up. I mean, a lot of it is just boring stuff like Swiffer pad refills, but I did pick up a few things just um, to be able to eat them while I'm on Whole30 or just in general. So I thought I might share that with you guys. I picked up some almond butter. This is organic, which is nice. So Costco is now carrying organic almond butter. Almond butter can be very expensive, especially if you want the organic one. They didn't have a choice between creamy and crunchy because typically I always get crunchy, but they only had creamy. But this was under 13 bucks. So that was a really good price. Like this one I'm working on from Trader Joe's. I remember Trader Joe's had a pretty good deal on this, but if you go to, you know, a Sprouts or a Whole Foods, a jar of this size almond butter, if it's organic, will be easily nine dollars or so. This one was not organic, which is why it was probably a better price. I picked up some harmless coconut water. This is my favorite brand of coconut water, but it is a treat because it's very expensive. It's easily 3x the price of your typical Zyco or uh, Vita Coco or any of those. It's just way more delicious. This is in the refrigerated section because it's perishable, unlike the shelf stable kinds. But honestly, I was so skeptical about it until my friend was just like, trust me, it's so much better. And she let me taste hers and you can taste the difference. It is so good. Sometimes I will use it if I'm just making a smoothie, if I just want that extra bit of electrolytes and nutrition. But usually for those purposes, I'll just use the cheaper coconut water and I'll, I will drink these neat. So I can really feel like I'm at least getting my money's worth and tasting that upcharge. I picked up this bag of six peppers. Hopefully there's nothing alive inside of any of them. If you watch my recent not vlog, you know what I'm talking about, but I don't even think this is actually a better price than what I pay when I get a bag of three from Trader Joe's, but I don't know. It just seemed convenient to get six at once because I am going through peppers kind of a lot these days. I picked up some chicken thighs. This has been kind of one of my go-to proteins because I'm, I've got some really great recipes from Fit Slow Cooker Queen on Instagram, and um, they're just really easy slow cooker proteins. So they are organic, which, you know, doesn't mean much to me, but I can't really find pasture-raised chicken locally. I've literally never seen it. I always see organic, which, you know, I guess that's better than nothing, better than the non-organic chicken, but... Yeah, I always try to get a pack of these at Costco. They also have drumsticks and breasts, but I, for me, find the thighs to be, at the moment anyway, the most versatile and tasty. Breasts are, of course, very versatile, but it's very easy to dry out your chicken breasts, and I'm just kind of over chicken breasts right now, so I've been doing thighs lately. I do definitely prefer dark meat. It's just so much tastier. And last but not least, I picked up some wild salmon fillets. So these will be in my freezer along with most of those uh, chicken thighs. I am going to be using some, and I'll show you guys in a moment when I'm dumping everything in my slow cooker. But this was a good deal. A lot of the fish in the frozen section at Costco was not a good deal. I was eyeing some frozen wild halibut because I do really like halibut, but it was about the same price as what I paid to get it from my counter at the grocery store. It wasn't any cheaper. So bear in mind, just because you're at Costco doesn't mean you won't find a better or equivalent deal somewhere else. You don't have to automatically buy something just because it's at Costco because sometimes it's not that good a price. I'm gonna put all this stuff away and then I'll be back to show you guys me throwing these chicken thighs in my slow cooker. I'm not gonna go through step by step because it's actually the same recipe I showed you guys in my previous knot vlog where I did it with uh, carne asada with beef. 
I don't eat beef all that often for many reasons. Uh, so I'm gonna make it today with chicken thighs instead and I will show you guys the um, shot of everything in the slow cooker just so you can see how it looks. And of course, later on, like five hours from now, I'll show you guys it once it's all done. chicken is in the crock pot and um, it took me longer to get everything going uh, than I expected. I expected to be able to get everything chucked in the crock pot in like 20 minutes but it took me longer because I spent a good while cleaning those chicken thighs and to trim off a lot of fat. Some had skin on them even though they're supposed to be boneless skinless and just prepping those thighs took me a bit longer than expected and then I had to double everything so I had twice as much uh, limes to juice and technically I should have juiced two oranges but I didn't want to do two oranges I decided to do one and only double the limes but I doubled everything else because I have about four pounds of thighs and I used a blood orange just because I saw them at the store and I was just like that sounds fun and interesting and that's just something that anyone who cooks a lot at home and wants to avoid getting into a rut that's something I recommend if you cook a lot and you don't want to get sick of cooking the same things but you also want to have your go-to clutch I can always rely on this type of meals that you can make switch up the little things rather than using a regular you know navel orange or whatever I use the blood orange and that made it more exciting I switched out the protein from flank steak to chicken thighs today things like that and then even with the peppers the recipe calls for bell peppers I went with one bell pepper and one pasilla chili so Things like that will make it feel like it's a much different meal when it kind of isn't and it helps me avoid getting tired of eating the same things while still letting me kind of be on cruise control in the kitchen. It's now about 2.30 so I have about two and a half hours until my feeding window opens unless I just decide to start eating at four and there's no way that this is going to be done because typically I've actually never used my slow cooker on high before. I've always used it on low so um, that would be four hours but I'm going to try it on high today and I'm gonna just cut the time in half. I imagine for this amount of chicken I would need a good four or five hours so I'm doing it on high for two and a half. I'll probably check it at two just to see if it's already cooked through and falling apart and then I'll just shut it off and hopefully it comes out just as good because for some reason I just assumed the lower and slower the better but if I can get a good result with my crock pot on high that will definitely be a nice time saver on days like this. Here you can see I've got my timer set, I've got it on high rather than my usual low and um, yeah I'm gonna go for two and a half hours but I'm, I am gonna check on the the thing at two just to see how it's doing. Back again in the same exact spot where you last saw me but it's just after three, it's like 3.15 I'm gonna break my fast now because I'm feeling a little bit peckish and I'm gonna break it with a piece of fruit because as I've mentioned in a previous video when you fasted for 12 plus hours and in this case I fasted about 36 hours or so the enzymes in your stomach the digestive enzymes essentially like <laughs> go into hibernation and it can be a little bit difficult for them to wake up if you eat anything that's a little hard to digest so fruit is usually a good way to go I usually just drink some kombucha but when I was buying the orange to make my crock pot dish I thought the idea of just eating an orange sounded so delicious and it just got me thinking where you know it's been so long since I've done a real fast you know three plus days or anything and your appreciation of just real whole foods is on 10 because I cannot wait to eat this orange I can't think of anything that sounds more delicious right now than just than just an orange so here we go it smells good too and I'm pretty sure this is the time of year that oranges are in season out here in Cali and this is a good one. The simple pleasures in life. The whole 30 has been a bit meditative for me, which has been really good. I've been, I mean, I'm already always in my own head, but I've become acutely aware of how much very simple things bring me the most joy. Just eating a fresh orange, making myself a nutritious meal, things like that. Those are the things that make me the happiest. Anyway, kind of a pointless ramble, but I just wanted to mention that because whenever 
I'm doing any sort of detox or juice cleanse or fasting, I always have these these aha moments, I guess, as Oprah would say. And uh, eating this orange is one of them. Ray Ray also enjoys very simple pleasures. done with her treat that was from that dog bakery that I've shown you guys before in previous not vlogs. I was there, uh, well not there at the bakery, but in the mall where that bakery is the other day, picking something up that I had reserved at Nordstrom. And uh, yeah, whenever I'm there, I'm like, mm, let me get a little something special for Miss Ray. So we did. Each week, whenever I'm at Trader Joe's, because they have the cheapest bananas, I'll just buy a few more and I let them get about this ripe. I might even let these go one more day. And then um, they're just super sweet. You don't need anything else sweet, like a protein powder that has any sweetener. This is one of my Basquiat magnets, but the magnet part keeps popping off, so I need to glue it back. That's why that's sitting here. Anyway. Um, so then I just break, the, I peel them, break them up with my fingers, and then freeze them, like such as, and I, um, and then I put them in my smoothies, and there's, the smoothie is so sweet and tasty. It's like I get to have a treat every day, so I'm gonna make that right now as a follow-up to my orange, and I feel like that will be enough to tide me over until my chicken is ready in... It says an hour and a half, so I gotta remember to put a yam in the oven in about half an hour or two, because I'm gonna have that chicken with a yam. But yeah, let's make this smoothie. I'll put you guys down. Cheap is this way so that you guys can actually see it. I think my battery's low, so hopefully it doesn't crap out on me whilst I'm trying to make this. For this, I need almond milk, coconut water. I am going to use some of my fancier coconut water only because this bottle is actually from a box that I had bought of those waters the last time I went to Costco and they're technically expired as of a little while ago, but they taste fine. So I just want to use them up. Expiration dates are more of a suggestion. They're not a hard and fast rule. Obviously frozen bananas, like I mentioned, I'm going to use almond butter and also turmeric, cinnamon, and a little bit of salt. So I do four ounces each of the almond milk and coconut water, or as close as I can get. About four and a half ounces of frozen banana. I'm gonna go a little over today. So that was more like five ounces of banana. Usually I do somewhere in the neighborhood of four and a half. Sometimes I go over, sometimes I go under. It's almost never exact. Then, I do 30 grams of my collagen peptides. Um, people always ask me about these, but they are linked in the description box of literally every single video where I have ever mentioned them, including this one. I get them from Amazon, so they're very accessible. And I have a subscription, so I get them automatically every month because I do use them a lot. About 30 grams of that. A healthy shake of the cinnamon. A healthy shake of the turmeric, which is really good for inflammation and Honestly, inflammation is the entire reason I'm even doing Whole30, but I've been trying to incorporate it pretty consistently into my diet even before starting Whole30 because of the knee issues that kind of created this domino effect of all my injuries. And then I just do a healthy dollop of almond butter. So this one's getting a bit low, as you might be able to see, which is why I'm happy I have the next one from Costco, that nice big jar of it. And I have really adjusted pretty well to having almond butter instead of peanut butter. I still definitely prefer the taste of peanut butter, but I look forward to this smoothie so much. The way I make it now with almond butter, I don't even miss the peanut butter any longer. And that is it. Super quick, super easy. Oh, you know what? I forgot one thing. I forgot my little shake of salt. So just a little bit of salt and that's that. Then I just have to blend this up. That is it. Now comes the best part, which is when I get to drink it. Cheers, friends. 
so good. How is it so good? There's like nothing in this. Olive oil, coconut water, bananas, and some spices. One of my vices when it comes to sugar is ice cream slash milkshakes. I love a milkshake. This, this is pretty close. This is pretty close to being as good as an actual milkshake. Maybe I've been living a paleo lifestyle too long that I <laughs> am losing the plot and not remembering how good an actual milkshake is. I mean, I've had a real milkshake recently you know, certainly within the past couple of months, but I would be just as happy having this and I don't have to worry about this killing me, basically. All right, I'm gonna finish this up and I'll see you guys a bit later, probably when this crock pot is about ready to be shut off. I wanted to show you guys this little book stand thing. I just picked this up, it was less than 10 bucks and I don't know why I just thought of getting one of these now because it is awesome. This is actually my Whole30 book in here, if you can kind of see there. It's my Whole30 book and part of the, another reason I wanted to do Whole30 was I've been slacking on my kitchen game and I knew that this, re this book had recipes in it and I thought that it might be a nice shot in the arm to get me to get out of my stir fry rut and make some other things that I could add to my arsenal. But sometimes it gets really messy in the kitchen when you're cooking. But um, I knew these little book stands exist, so I went and I found one. I will link it below if you guys are curious about the exact one that I have. But it's got these little arms so you can keep it open to whatever page. You can adjust the angle of it in the back so it can be more tilted forward or more tilted back and it's just like the perfect size for cookbooks as well so with this and like my nom nom paleo book it's going to be so nice because i don't have to worry about like getting my books really messed up when i'm cooking or just keeping it open to the page i need even because it's it's just open like that and it's perfect i'm this is one of the best kitchen investments i've made and it was so cheap i regret that it took me so long to get one of these but i love it and as you can see i have it open to the eggplant buns recipe which is a substitute basically you just make uh you roast some thick slices of eggplant and use those in place of like a hamburger bun so i'm actually going to make some of those now so i can have some turkey burgers uh, for dinners the next couple of days one thing I forgot to mention is it's also perfect for just putting my tablet in as well if I'm using that to look up a recipe like it's an online recipe or something. Super clutch. So my oven is already preheating and these eggplant slices are supposed to be three quarters of an inch thick. So pretty doggone thick. I'm actually gonna sharpen my knife real quick. Here is calling for these to be drizzled with cooking fat. After this, it says to flip each slice and then uh, do the same thing to the other side and then season with salt and pepper. But I'm actually going to season with salt and pepper and then flip because I like seasoned food. So I'm gonna season both sides. I always treat recipes like a blueprint unless I'm baking, but even then sometimes like if I feel like I understand what I'm doing well enough, even then I don't necessarily follow it to a T. My pepper grinder recently died on me. It broke, so I gotta get a new one. A little bit of salt, roll these guys. And now I'm flipping, and I will grease up the other side and then season this side. Okay, now I just have to roast these in the oven at 425 for 20 minutes until they are brown on the outside and fork tender. And then I can let them cool and store them in the fridge until I'm ready to use them for turkey burgers. It is now the evening. I took Ray to the P-A-R-K and she had a little bit of a run around. She's had her dinner and my chicken's finally done. I did wind up having to add another hour to it because I looked at it at two and then at two and a half hours and the chicken was still partially raw. I did end up also adding some vegetable broth. Let me show you. Oh, it's in my fridge. 
I added some of this vegetable broth, just the Trader Joe's. This is Whole30 friendly. There's no sugar or anything in it. I just felt like it needed a little bit more liquid because there hadn't been enough that had released from the vegetables and the chicken to kind of cover everything when I had checked on it. So I added a little bit more and ended up needing to add another hour, which I also did on high. And at this point, the chicken breaks apart super easily with just a wooden spoon, so it is good to go. I actually wound up not needing to bake any yams today because I have some leftover uh, garlic mashed cauliflower. It's like mashed potatoes, but it's cauliflower instead. And I had made some of that last week and I still have quite a bit left, so I'm gonna have that with the chicken and call it. So with that, I'm going to wrap up this not vlog and enjoy my dinner, digest, and relax with my doggo, who is of course right here. Hi, Ray Ray. I hope you guys got some ideas from seeing a few more of the things that I am cooking and blending while I'm on Whole30. Uh, if you are trying to whip your nutrition back into shape or maybe even just cook more food for yourself. And I hope you guys enjoyed spending another couple days with T and Ray and Boo. <laughs> I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye. That's a, that's a nappy headed hose there, I'm gonna tell you that now. <laughs>